Well, let's jump into chapter 17 here. This is our final chapter. We're going to talk about reporting services. So uh, let's just kind of jump in. You've seen these now 17 times, right? We've talked about the chapter listing at the beginning. And... All right. So pretty short chapter, just like the integration services and analysis services chapter. My real goals here are to tell you a little bit about it, show you a little bit about how to install it, show you a little bit about how it works. Okay. That's kind of our goals. It's what we did with analysis services, what we did with integration services as well. Okay. Now, we've looked at this for the past, now, I guess, four chapters. And we talk about this as the data in the enterprise. And we've talked about the database engine here and here. And we've talked a little about the integration process here. Uh, we've talked about analysis services and cubes. And now it's time to talk about little old reporting services, what our actual clients see. Okay. So let's just kind of jump in here and talk about this. So reporting services, uh, abbreviated SSRS, this is a report server and report development platform. Okay, it's both of these. It is a server-based report solution. That's why Microsoft's marketing team wants you to think about it. So we develop reports, we create reports, we build reports in a tool called Report Builder that we'll see here in a little bit. We can also build these in the Visual Studio. We can build these in SQL Server data tools. Okay? And we can also, if we're uh, sufficiently motivated, we could handwrite some XML files that would then get interpreted as uh, reports. It's, I suppose if you started with a template, not so terrible, but uh, there are certainly faster and more productive uses uh, of your time, I think. Now, reporting services reports. So what you've created when you built your report, you can now store this in a SQL Server database engine. And there's going to be a big advantage of that. We're going to be able to serve that out to the rest of the world. We could also save that as an RDL file. That is that XML file. Okay? We could also embed our report in an ASP.NET web page or a C-sharp web application, for example. We can also embed this within SharePoint, and we can use PowerView, and we can use reporting services all within uh, SharePoint okay, to make these uh, really accessible to our team. Now, how we deliver those reports can also be customized. We can have these be sent to an email. We can send these out. The browsers can um, be used both on the mobile devices and on desktop devices, and you can make it pretty smart in how it responds to these. Uh, they can also be delivered by a web service. We'll talk a little bit more about URLs and web services here in a little bit. We can also have these delivered on a schedule every 6 a.m. Email Charlie with the, you know, the organizational report. And we can also tell it when the data changes over this threshold has modified. Now I want a new report to be automatically generated. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, just a couple of basics here about 2012 and reporting services. First... If you've bought a standard edition license, a business intelligence license, a, an enterprise edition license to SQL Server, you have already paid for reporting services. So it's included in your license. Okay? Now, there is a free version of reporting services that comes with the Express Edition. We talked about this back in Chapter 2. Uh, you can get the PDF for this video and click through this link. This is for the U.S. version. Um, but you can download the Express Editions. When you do, make sure you download this SQL Server Express with advanced services. Okay, I don't know why it just doesn't say with reporting services, uh, <laughs> but that's the real advanced services is that it includes reporting services uh, with it there. Okay, so you can follow along and play along. Let's just talk real quickly a little bit about the architecture of reporting services and how it kind of all works. Um, but one little myth uh, this is not just a small baby report server. This is not just one developer's machine creating reports that serve only that developer. Uh, and on the flip side, this is not only for 100,000 people organizations, right? This works 
for whatever you want to put it in. Uh, if I was writing the marketing marketing documentation for this, I would say uh, the target audience is all companies of all sizes. Okay, it really does uh, serve to replace your existing reporting platform. And it doesn't matter whether you are a five-person organization or a 500,000-person organization. Reporting services has the beef to meet your needs. Okay? Um, now, that being said, uh, let me just kind of go back a little bit and say, is it going to do everything that a third-party company whose sole life is built around reporting will do? <sighs> well... Architecturally, yes. Feature-wise, no. There are going to be holes. Um, there are going to be uh, third-party companies, and I think this is true with almost any reporting platform, third-party companies who can add value uh, to your reporting services platform. You can go to uh, several of these. Feel free to write in and ask. I'll, I'll give you some through email. Um, uh, third-party companies who make controls for reporting services that make your reports look better, shine better, sort better, um, add you know, jQuery support to them, Ajax type, um, calendar widgets and things like that. Um, so out of the box, reporting services is phenomenal and it can be extended um, as well. All right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for the sidebar. All right. We have three components here. So three main kind of parts that we talk about here. One is the client. So we're talking about a report-based solution. What is the client? The client is the one saying, hey, run this report for me, okay? It might be you on your phone. It might be uh, you in a browser. It could be um, you requesting something by email. You want a report run. And who do you request this of? You request it of the report server. Reporting services creates a report server, okay? So the report server is reporting services. Okay. When we go through and install this in a couple of videos, you will see we have to set up reporting services and it becomes a report server. Okay. So the client makes requests of the report server and then the data that the reports will be built from is then rendered by the report server and sent back to the client. Okay. All right. And so your data, what can we report from? You can report from almost anything. Really, you can report from any, if you can get an OLADB provider or an ODBC connection to it, you can report from it. So that's just about uh, anything. You may actually have to buy a third-party provider or have to install a provider on that system so that it will be recognized. But chances are really high that you can report from it. Okay. So here are our components here. Uh, you know, this would be the client. And he makes a request of the server. So here's the reporting services server. And how do I know this is the reporting services server? I took my SQL Server 2012 installation media, I put it on the server, I ran through setup, and I said, hey, I want to install reporting services. Okay, we're going to do that here in a little bit. Now, once reporting services reads this request, it identifies which report that this user wants to run. I'll call him Timmy. Okay? So Timmy says he wants to run report A. And report A, it turns out, reads data from three different data sources. So it has to go get some data from here. It runs a query. And it brings that query back. Okay, And it runs a Maybe he's running report A as a dashboard of some kind to get data from multiple sources, which is absolutely fine. And we bring it back and put it right here. And then also we'll get some from this Oracle server uh, down here. Okay, so maybe we're bringing data from a SQL server relational with a mashing it together with an Excel spreadsheet and mashing it together again uh, to create some cool mashup with Oracle here. So report A then renders all of that. So, you know, Timmy's asks, say, hey, I want report A. And then the server renders that report and sends it back to Timmy. Okay. And it sends it back to Timmy in a browser or a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet or an email, right, on the phone. Okay. So those are your main components, okay? This is really traditional client server, I think. The client makes a request of the report server, right? And how that client makes a request is using a URL. You're going to, uh, we'll see a little bit more of this, but 
like it's going to be something to the effect of my report server dot learn it first dot com and I'm running out of space so I'm gonna have to break to a new line uh, report a dot um, you know RDL so it wants to re requests to run that particular report okay and then the server receives that and sends it back okay to the client server okay now when that report server makes the request to the data source it's still client server okay so for example the client is now the report server and the server is the data source okay now, when you, when whoever is the report author here, this person here, the one who created report A.RDL, they have to specify how the report server will authenticate to that data source. Okay. But you can see it here, right? So now we're back to talking client server, but now the report server is the client. It makes a request of this server up here. So maybe this is, you know, a SQL server relational. Well, when it makes that request, it also has to include what credentials to use. Is it going to use Windows authentication? Does the report have a SQL Server authentication login embedded into it? That's all done at design time when we create that report. Okay? So the client makes a request of the server. The server then responds back and sends the data. Okay? Client server again, right? So uh, like I mentioned earlier, all of our requests the client makes to the server are made with a URL, okay? And that's not something that's a big deal. Usually, you know, you just have a link within an application and a user clicks a link and it launches that particular report, okay? So you don't, you're not asking your users to remember URLs, okay? Um, you just embed those and link to them. It's no big deal. Now, just so you know, reporting services, whenever you see URL, you start thinking, well, we need some sort of a web server, okay? Reporting services has its own web server built right into it, okay? So it manages it there. You don't have to go and install integration, uh, sorry, uh, IIS, uh, Internet Information Services, on that particular server. It's built straight into the reporting services engine, okay? That was one of the big nice changes of uh, 2008. Now, the report server does a lot more than just connecting to the data source and creating the report. There's a lot more, and we'll see this when we play with Report Manager once we get it installed. This is how we can define secure access to the reports. Who gets to run this report? Do we want to schedule delivery for 6 a.m. on Mondays? Um, how do we want to render this report? What formats do we want to make it available uh, to our users? I mean, you know, a whole lot more. Now, I did this with the 173 and 175 for analysis services here. But just a reminder, course 170, total intro course. Our goal here is just to give you a little hands-on, a little idea. Here's what it is. And then we have a full-blown course, course 174, that covers all of reporting services, right? Straight up from administration to development as well. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.